I was on the receding end of a forbidden BGG move, and this is what happened. It all started a month ago. I was finally getting better from long COVID, a tiresome illness that makes you extremely tired for months on end. And since a year ago, my wife fell in love with BGJ, I gradually started coming back on the mat as well. After a few weeks, I got hooked on BGJ again. And even with long COVID still lingering around, I started to manage to go to four classes per week, which was awesome. But then one day I went to an open mat, a training session where everyone grapples each other for an hour straight. I was doing some light rolls with various people, just had a couple of light fun rolls with women. And then I partnered up with a guy who I generally pose a threat to, but who usually taps me out. I'm a blue belt, by the way, if you didn't know. I did roll with him a couple of times in the past, and he seems like a nice guy, but he's also intense. He's one of those guys that really, really wants to get you. Honestly, probably a type of person that I will never roll again in my life with, just because of what happened next. We started standing, I started looking for underhooks, and then we got tangled up real close, so I couldn't see anything happening. Then suddenly I feel him wrap around my leg with his legs. Now I start to feel a takedown coming, but I also feel that I can resist it because I can keep my my balance, so I do my best to do that. Then I start to feel immense pressure building up on my leg, all the way until it starts to bend in a direction that it shouldn't bend, and then finally it gives and I hear this loud pop that rings through the entire mat full of people. A number of questions started running through my head. Is it my knee? Is it a ligament? Is it a joint? But I was going to learn how bad the injury actually was only later. And then another single thought entered my mind. It was immense pain throbbing through my entire left leg. I fall to the ground screaming from pain. And then I instinctively start to push myself with the other leg towards the end of the mat like I was in some kind of a saving private Ryan type of situation. The pain was so intense that I couldn't do anything for minutes on end, obviously besides rolling around in pain. Finally, the pain subsided slightly, enough for me to pull myself together, as one of my BGJ partners who just caught himself injured a few minutes ago came up to check on me. Now this is a moment where something else happened that caught me off guard. Although it's clear now that a lot of people heard the snap, and my screaming was loud enough for neighboring studios to hear me, no one else from the entire group even stopped to come and check on me, including the instructors. Everyone just kept rolling as if it didn't concern them. And in a way I get it, I mean it's an open and mad, so everybody is for themselves. But at the same time, I've been running a professional martial arts school for years. I traveled across the whole globe and visited some of the most top-notch BJJ and combat sports schools in the world. And trust me, I know it's not the way things are supposed to go when somebody gets injured. To make things worse, there was nothing in the gym that could help me out. There was no cold spray, there were no painkillers, there were no crutches, and there was even no ice. But I'll get back to that part a little bit later. My injured friend then helped me out stand on one of my legs because I realized I can't place any weight whatsoever on the injured leg of my own. And then I told my partner who injured me to go roll with someone else because he was the last person I wanted to see right now. And obviously you're probably wondering what movement he did to me. Well it turns out he applied one of the free forbidden illegal moves in BGJ and to make things even more fun he applied the most dangerous one on me. The move is called a standing scissor sweep and I'll show you a clip right now of how it looks and actually how another person got injured in the exact same way but feel free to skip this clip because it's not the most pleasant watch. Is there a Deborah Anderson? Now this is where the next part of the story only begins because it turns out there were a lot of more problems coming down my way. I then, with the help of my injured friend, hopped to the changing room, where after some talking, I decided to call an ambulance. In order to calm down the pain at least a little bit, we took off my shorts and put my leg under a cold shower to cool it down. Then eventually the ambulance arrived and injected me with some painkillers, which did help at the moment. And then without even getting a chance to put my shorts back on, they took me down to the ambulance with my underwear on for everyone to see. And then I got taken to the hospital where I had to wait for a couple couple hours in my underwear to get an x-ray done. But the underwear is just the funny part. The real issues is what was about to come up next. Initially I tried to make the best out of the worst situation. I was joking around with some nurses, explaining to them how sports are really healthy to do, until finally after doing a couple of tests a doctor comes up to me and says, Mr. Rokas, you're a patient man. How do you mean I ask? Well later I was going to learn that the injury is even more severe than the doctors initially assessed. They already managed to see that a part of it was a broken shin bone, one of the strongest bones in the human body. And theoretically instead of telling jokes to the nurses, I was supposed to be screaming all the time in pain and complaining. My leg was then immediately put in a cast and I was moved to a hospital bed. I was told that the surgery is going to happen the next day, but then the next day I was told that the surgery is going to happen the next day. And then the next day, 
I was told that the surgery is gonna happen the next day. The doctors initially told me that the surgery is not gonna be a difficult one, so they kept postponing me because others had a bigger priority. But then after spending six days in the hospital bed with a broken leg, another surgeon came down who was going to perform the surgery, and he explained to me that the reason they were postponing me was actually a different one. It turned out that my surgery is going to be a very complex one. And while initially this is how optimistically I felt, whether I am upset about it or not, it does not change a thing, and it's not the first time I have an injury. So I, I just try to be as positive as I can be looking at the upsides versus the downsides of it. I won't have to cook as much, clean, do shopping. My wife is laughing here next to me. This is how I felt after I learned the bad news. Yesterday I learned that there's a chance that I will have uh, an injury which will probably affect my knee for the rest of my life. Yeah, um, hopefully, I mean, it is what it is. We'll see what happens, but just uh, trying to accept an injury which may impact the rest of your life is much harder uh -huh. than uh, accepting something for you know six months or 12 months but hopefully everything is gonna be fine. Finally, after waiting for six days, I was taken to the surgery room, but even that didn't go smoothly. It turns out that I'm some kind of a drug immune freak, as the first dose of anesthesia that they put into my spine didn't actually work. It was supposed to cut off any sensation on my legs, and it didn't. Then after 15 minutes of waiting, they decided to inject my spine with a second dose of anesthesia. Luckily, that did eventually work out, even though I was still feeling my legs partially and they already started operating on my legs. I also didn't want to go into full unconscious mode. I guess I'm becoming somewhat of a control freak as I'm getting older. And as a result, even after they gave me some heavy sedatives, for the first hour, I kept waking up. And even though I don't remember this, when I woke up, I would apparently tell the surgeons to check out my YouTube channel. And once I asked them why they are operating next to my balls, because as it turns out, they had something next to my groin to cut off the blood supply to my leg while they're operating. Eventually though, the nurse gave me a record amount of sedatives. And after about an hour of waking up, I did shut up. But then still at the very end of the surgery while it was going on, I woke up again. And this time I actually remember what was happening. Although there was a curtain in front of me, I didn't see my legs, I started to gradually feel the sensation in them again. And I could actually feel them operating my leg, like hammering it and other stuff. The pain wasn't too bad and it was kind of fascinating. It was kind of cool. I actually enjoyed it, but it was a bit of a freaky moment. But then I turned to my right and I saw a monitor of an x-ray being done on my leg right now as they're operating. And this is what I saw. It turns out the surgery was very complicated, lasting three hours. They added two metal plates and 12 freaking screws into my leg, which will actually stay with me for the rest of my life. As to take them out would be extremely difficult later on because of how complex the initial surgery was. I also learned that the fracture was actually an intra-articular fracture, which means that the fracture went all the way to my knee joint. And this is where things get worse because that means my knee joint was literally affected. And that means that I will have a greatly increased risk of osteoarthritis for the rest of my life, potentially leading to constant knee pain forever. Luckily, I was in the hands of good surgeons and they did a great and diligent job and hopefully the complications won't be severe even though now I'm lying here with post-surgical infection. Still, for the next eight weeks, I won't be able to put any weight whatsoever on my left leg. I'm not even allowed to bend it for the next two weeks and then only later, gradually, I will be increasing the angle of how much I can bend my leg over the course of months. My leg and knee will never be the same because I will always have an increased risk of injury on it. I'll be honest, this did make me reconsider consider my relationship with martial arts. Lying in the hospital bed, considering the lifelong implications this experience will have on my body, I kept asking myself, do I really need this type of risk in my life? What if something like this happens again? Even before I had this injury, I learned that both of my meniscuses in my knees are torn, and it's only a matter of time until I will have to have additional surgeries if I will continue doing combat sports. It is still difficult to say how much I will continue doing martial arts once I recover. Obviously now I feel down, and maybe after I recover, I will forget about all of this, and despite Despite the fact that my knee will forever be affected and I will always be more susceptible to knee injuries now, I won't be surprised if I will still come back to the BGD math, but I will probably never come back with the same intensity or passion as before. I also wish that this story would be an educational story to all BJJ gyms and academies across the whole globe. My intention here is not to blame someone, but to make instructors think. Do you have a protocol in place of what to do when somebody gets injured? Do you have the right equipment for it? Is your staff trained for it? Because let me tell you, rolling around in pain when your leg is broken and and everyone ignores you and then needing to call the ambulance yourself 
it's not a great feeling. And it's obviously not something that would raise the prestige of an academy. Also, education on what moves are illegal and strong emphasis on safe rolling etiquette is something that I would like to expect from all academies. Unfortunately, as much as I used to love the gym where I was going to, that's not really part of the program. And I'm dead certain that that's also missing from so many academies across the whole globe, which are all simply going with the flow instead of trying to prevent a disaster. And by the way, if you're worried about the Ultimate Cell Defense Championship Season 2, don't worry about it. Everything is still in place. It's being edited and prepared. And the plan is to have it released on September 8th, and there should be no more delays. I'll just have to do some editing in my bed with my broken leg, which is not awesome, but it's doable. And if you can't wait for USDC 2 to come out, you can check the Patreon page below at the top of the comments, because there you can see the episodes early. Thank you as always for watching the video, and let's keep owning our journeys.